wrapping up this Knicks season, man. 103 to 89, the Knicks fall to the Hawks and are officially, officially eliminated from the playoffs. And I just had to get on. I had to get on and start this thing off right now. You know what I mean? I just had to uh, get with the people right now. CK and Ashley were on their way. But I just had to get with the people right now because, um, you know, it's a tough way to lose, man. Obviously, uh, didn't want it to end this way. It was a Cinderella season. 41 wins, 41 and 31. Fourth seed in the East. Took us all by surprise. Had a most improved player. Coach of the year candidate. D-Rose trade took us by storm. The improvements by RJ. Quickly coming on. Obi coming on later. You know, Taj. The defense. You know, these, these guys gave us a lot to be proud of, man. Definitely gave us a lot to be proud of. And they went into this series in a 4-5 matchup against a team that they dominated in the regular season, you know, led by Julius Randle and, and his 37 average. Um, but this was a different Hawks team, you know, and, and I have been saying this since game four that this is a different team. And I had watched every game in person except for this one, game five. I didn't go to the MSG tonight, obviously, but... Um, just from the opening tip, what this team can do defensively and what they did do defensively, taking us, taking away our strengths, stopping Randall, although he stopped himself in many ways, too many turnovers once again tonight, eight turnovers. And then offensively, what they give you with the, you know, through the, through the brilliance of their point guard, this was just a tough team to stop, man. And you saw it, you know, even though game one, we lost by two Hawks double digit lead in that game. Game two was, was the epic comeback win down double digits. Game three, they were down double digits. Game four, they got rocked 26 points. They were losing by at one point. And today game five, they were losing by as much as 14 in the third and give credit, give credit, you know, quickly, RJ, OB sparked us, cut it to nine between the third and the fourth. Knicks were getting out, hustled, out, muscled in that third quarter. Terrible turnovers again by Randall. D. Rose was a shell of himself. I didn't think he was going to make it out of game four, so I'm not surprised that he didn't, that he didn't uh, perform tonight because he just looked banged up. Uh, but we were still able to cut it down to nine in the fourth with... About 10 minutes ago, Hawks put Trey Young back in the game. In a minute, it's back up to 16. And that was pretty much it, bro. That was pretty much it. I thought that this Hawks team was just better. I thought that this Hawks team was just better than us. Flat out better. And in a series, when you lose 4-1, to one, yes, you could point to... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the rotations, you know, we should have went to Frank, we should have went to this guy earlier, should have taken this guy out, shouldn't have, shouldn't have benched Peyton, even though that was crazy to me. You know, you can point to, okay, yeah, they got out hustle, they, you know, sometimes the effort wasn't there, so on and so forth. I think this team was just better than us. Point blank, period. There wasn't any facet of the game in which... They weren't better than us. Whether it was shooting the threes, whether it was facilitating, dominating the boards with Capella, we knew that was going to be an issue going in. That was it was never addressed. Obviously, we were, we were at a huge disadvantage. Whether Noel was healthy or not, we still weren't going to win that. The three point shooting by their role players, and and what got me was the fact that the Hawks were off. From three, they were like, they were like three for seventeen from downtown going into the half. Yet they still had a five point lead, and looked like they were in control of the game. And so to me, that wasn't a good sign. To me, I didn't feel good about us going into the half with the Hawks having not shot the ball well. Yet still, 
winning the game and, and looked to be in control because Julius was out of control. You know, and that's that's just another story. 23 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, 8 turnovers. The, 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 the man was a mess this whole series. You know, the man was a mess this whole series. The shot selection was terrible, tonight at least. Shot selection was terrible. And yeah, I, I thought the Hawks did defend him well in this series. But overall, he just never was able to adjust, was never able to get into to, to a comfort zone, and was never really in a position to really facilitate and play make for the team as he did in the, early in the season. He's our engine. If he doesn't have it, it's, it's not going to happen. And he just did not have it. Uh, secondly, you're looking for something out of your point guard, the glaring weakness of this team. As I said, it didn't look like D-Rose was going to make it past game four. And tonight he was he was terrible. Three for 11, six points, five times. On the flip side, when you put Bullock on Trey, you have DeAndre Hunter now going to work on Derrick Rose. And I thought Hunter kept saying this name from the preview series on. And this kid had his best game of the series. 15.6 of 11 from the field. 101 from downtown. Point plus 19 on the night. He was a big factor in this series. Offensively and defensively. Defensively, he's able to guard Randall, RJ, Derrick Rose. Very versatile. And I, I thought he hurt us in a big way in this series. Big way in this series. Call me up, 657-383-1509. This is Nick's Post Game Live, number one show for the fans by the fans, presented by Manscaped. CK and Ashley are on their way. I just wanted to kick this off and, and vent a little bit, man. I just wanted to kick this off and vent a little bit. Get this thing started early. I didn't want to wait tonight. You know what I mean? So you had Hunter. You had... No answer for Trey Young this whole series. 36 points tonight. Embarrassed us once again. You put Bullock on him, he got toasted. He got cooked. Finished. Finito. You looking for Frank Day? You looking for, for some sort of answer? I'm, not, I'm just not sure what would have helped. The kid was just outstanding this series. Sometimes you just got to tip your cat, man. When the, when the opponent is better, they're just better. And this kid was better. He was blown by him in isolation. The pick and roll was unstoppable. Whether it was the floater, the kickouts for the three, or the lob to Capella, it's a pick your poison. It's a pick your poison offense. Another thing about the Hawks, if you notice, and which is very much on display tonight, they have guys outside of Capella in those lineups that could also put the ball on the floor. They're not one dimensional like the Knicks are, which is very important. In the playoffs, when you're leaving guys little room to shoot, a la Bullock. Now, Bullock came alive tonight, thankfully. But if you look at uh, uh, Herder, you look at Collins, you look at Hunter, you look at um, Bogdanovich, you know, not only can they shoot the three, they could also get their own shot. They could also put the ball on the floor and get their own shot. So, <laughs> how do you stop that defensively? There's only so much defense that you can play to try to slow that team down. It's a high-octane offense. It's a high-octane offense of very versatile players. Uh, Gallinari can shoot the three, can put the ball on the floor. Lou Will. It's high-octane, man. It's tough to stop. So that's going to hurt you because if you don't have enough offense to counter, you're going to get caught in a frenzy. And, and I felt like that's where the Knicks have been this whole series, man. This whole series. Even in games one and two, when the Knicks had a double-digit lead, it went away like that. As soon as Trey Young comes back in the game, it's, it's, it goes away. It's, it's, just, it's a tough offense to stop, man. So we added in five games, man. How you feeling, bro? Uh, you said it perfect. I could be better. Yeah. You know, trying to stay positive because you know what? 
this season was still magical. Tough yes. ending, right? Tough ending, but at least it's not an ending we're used to where it's ended at the end of the season where mm-hmm. we're way <laughs> uh, more losses than wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, tough to only take one in a series where we had home court advantage. But, man, look, we got a lot of positives ahead of us. It's going to be an interesting offseason. Uh, we can point fingers at this person, that person. I'm not there right now. I'm proud of this team. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun all season talking about this basketball team, and I know it's going to only get more entertaining as the offseason go continues. So, yeah, you know what? Uh, it, it, it stings, right? Yeah, but tough. Man. I'm, I'm very positive about what we got for the future. I'm very positive. It's tough, you know, yeah. especially when you just you just looking for answers, and and our mm-hmm. holes are just staring right at us every time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's the point guard. It's 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 you know the the lack of of wing shooting, um, you know Burks not not coming through after game one. IQ yeah. yeah he came on tonight but most of the series outside of game one he really wasn't there. Yeah. And 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 you know we knew the benches was was gonna play a big role in this man but our bench really really fell asleep. Uh, I guess you, you could you could say it was after they put Rose in the starting lineup but I I I don't know. You know what more could have been done, bro? Because yeah. with the Peyton thing, I think people have to understand for the for the minority that was like, well, they should have never tinkered with the lineup. You gotta understand, bro. The Hawks weren't even guarding Peyton in the first two <laughs> Five games. On four, bro. <laughs> you understand? Like, there's a reason why Tibbs pulled the eject button within minutes of Game One. Mm-hmm. He didn't like what he saw. Mm-hmm. So. It's just it, it, we just don't didn't, didn't have the depth, and yeah. Rose gave us all he had in Game Three. I, trust me, bro. When I saw him leave Game Four, I didn't like what I saw. Yeah, he he looked like he was he was completely finished. Yeah, I think he gave us all he had. He gave in game us all three, he had because Game Four and Game Five, he he just wasn't the same. You can yeah. see he was hobbling, like you mentioned in Game Four, and tonight you can see he was just not hitting that extra burst that he had in the first two games, you know, and, and it's not his fault. Like he, yeah. he came here to play that 25, like we talked about that 25 to 30 minute role and be that help that we need that X factor. And we asked for a lot from him and yeah. we cannot blame him for, Can't. you know, unfortunately falling apart the way he did. He was the only spark that we had throughout this entire series. That was consistent for us. Like you mentioned uh, right before I got on, Alec Burks gave us that one good game and then he was here or there. Okay. You mm-hmm. know, and it just wasn't consistent. It made quickly inconsistent, you know, Obi Toppin was great, but at the same time, you know, Tibbs and the coaching staff are going to keep wanting something out of Julius Randle. So yeah. Obi can only do so much in the time that he was given, you know, it's just, you know, I, that's why I'm saying I'm not ready to point fingers, nothing like that. You said it perfectly. The holes were there. We saw what was missing. We saw where we, we, we lacked. And uh, now it's just about what we can do uh, coming up, you know, in this yeah. off season, you know, I'm like I said, proud of this team. We, we will rebuild. We will rebuild. We got, to, got to, man. They got work to do. No doubt, man, but sure do, you sure know, do. We, I'm still, pr- I'm still proud of how this season went, bro. I, mm-hmm. I can't, you know, I mm-hmm. can't look at it any way differently. Obviously, yes, you wanted to see, you know, Randall. Mm-hmm. Randall was a big concern. There's no doubt. There's no sugar sure. coat now. I'm not trying to sugar coat sure. that, but I also knew that he, he's not gonna be our guy to, to, to be a real serious contender. He, he needs to be the third. He has to be, man. He's got to he be the to second be. or third, bro. Yeah. That was always yeah. gonna be the case, regardless if we won this series or not. You know what yep. I'm saying? That was always going to be the case, bro. Yep, and he deserves his flowers for getting us here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there is no Knicks four-seed playoffs without Julius Randle's season. It's but not there. Now, when we're talking about the next step, we're good now, yeah. right? We're good. But now we want to be competitive. And when it comes to that, like you said, unfortunately, we love Julius Randle. We want him to stay here, but he's not the one that's going to be he's not the person one. to lead us to be competitive no. next. You know he, what I mean? He's not the one. So, um, we'll but, but good year by him. Ash, yep. Nicole Moss in the building. Ash, what, what, yeah. were, what were some of your thoughts here? You know, you always have a level of optimism as a fan, especially when, you know, you're playing at home that the series is not going to end. And it, if it does end, it's not going to happen mm-hmm. in Madison Square Garden. And I was one of those people, you know, we did SNY together, and I said that the Knicks were going to win game five, and I wholeheartedly believed that this series was not going to end in New York. So... It's definitely um, a tough pill to swallow. I didn't want the season to end like this. I didn't want it to end on um, this note. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, my dad said something that, you know, really stuck with me. You know, this season wasn't a failure. I know a lot of the times no. the ultimate goal right. of each season is to go ahead and win a championship, right? If you're a non-rebuilding team, you're supposed to win championships. But for a rebuilding team, you're just supposed to compete. And the Knicks surpassed that. You know, they did more than compete. They ended up not only placing in the playoffs, but having home court advantage. And mm -hmm. it really is something that you have to celebrate. This team, like I said, surpassed not only the expectations of the media, but us as the fans. And I look at it, you know, from a glass half full kind of scenario, trying to lick my wounds a bit. You see what this team has accomplished with so little, yeah. right? Yeah. There's so many voids on this team. And I think those voids were even more magnified um, in this series when you're playing a team that's more complete like the Atlanta Hawks. But just knowing how many voids this team does have and how many things we need to go ahead and work on in the offseason to see the level of, of competition and just the way that this team was able to perform despite all of that. Mm -hmm. It's really something that I'm excited for the future of this team, of this franchise, to see what this team looks like when you get those pieces that you need, this is going to be a team that's going to be around for a very long time. And yeah. listen, if people are sick of Knicks fans, if people are <laughs> sick of the New York Knicks now, just wait. We're just getting started, baby. New York, we're here. What's Let's up? Go. We're not Let's going go. anywhere. The Rhyme Animal Chuck D is checking in right now. Chuck, how you feeling? I usually don't call, but you know this. <laughs> I have to pull out massive salutes. Yeah. You know... CP, Ash, CK, Troopers, Troopers, you know, and uh, um, hey, all, all I say, this is growth, man. It feels like the end of summer camp. <laughs> it feels like the end of a tour. You know, when the tour yeah. date ends and everybody got to go home, uh, it feels like the end of a play, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have a closing night. But yeah. this is growth, man. This is good growth, man. I don't think there's been a season that's felt this amazing. I, I say even before the 90s, man, because it came out of nowhere, man. Mm -hmm. And I told everybody, we've been in the playoffs. We've been in the playoffs since the beginning of April. Every game was the playoffs for, for us. Yeah. To get the 41 and 31 was unimaginable, you know? So mm -hmm. we knew we was going to run into the buzzsaw. I like to tell you that Kenny, Charles, EJ, Chuck, they sent everybody fishing except for one or two teams <laughs> that fired up themselves in the finals. So, Ashley, you could – take some solace that you'll see most of the people on that losing table talking about that L that as they exit the playoffs. So you can catch that. So, and also understand this, man, Clint Capella been losing playoffs the last six years. So he could talk, you know, yeah. he could talk on this round. He, I mean, they, he's been sent home the last six years as a rocket. So, you know, he's got a little something going and the rest of them. So we got a new history. We got a new rivalry. We go, we tool, we shape. You know, the the fans gave 150 yeah, percent. Knicks did. fans TV 150 percent, and the team gave 150 percent. So stand up, stand proud. I'm not the closer here. We wait for Jay Boogie. Salute y'all forever, man. Yeah. Forever Salute love, Chuck. Knicks Nation. Salute, Salute Chuck, Chuck, man. We had a, we had a great season, yes, man. We had a great season. Thanks for calling, and and thanks for supporting, man. And uh, everybody throw a hashtag PE in, in the chat, man. No doubt about it, because Chuck is in. He's on this show watching with and chatting with the people before me, before I'm even on. And that, and that's most games. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll be I'll come on halftime, check the chat, because the chat will be going once the show's uh, announced. And it's Chuck in there chatting and it's Angel and the, and it's this down a third and, and it's every night. You know, Chuck and it's is Ari already Ari's in it. <laughs> or early. <laughs> so before the show even starts. Uh, Chuck, Chuck is in here vibing with the people, man. The mosh pit, as we call it, and uh, and we had a chance, we had an opportunity to go to the Phoenix game at MSG, man. That was a hell of a hell of an opportunity and and uh, experience for me as well, just hanging out with him. And and he's right, man. You know, just even the dog fight that this team was in, you know, trying to maintain fourth, yeah, at the end of the season, knowing that or thinking that this second half schedule was gonna be a gauntlet for. Him. And they actually, you know, they, they made it through fairly well. And then they went on that West Coast trip. We went 3-3 three and three on that West Coast trip and, and finished the season against the Celtics. Ended up locking in that four seed. So it was a hell of a ride, man. No doubt. Hell of a ride.
Let's get to it. It's what the people have been waiting for. Yes. The closer all year to close it off for the final time. Put a bow on this season. Jay Boogie, how you feeling, man? Salute, salute, salute. Three capital <laughs> S's. Shout out to everybody that's been riding with us the whole season. All the podcasts, everybody that's in the chat. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, that's been rocking with this orange and blue. Salute, salute, salute to you. Give yourself a standing ovation. Applaud yourself. But this is not the final calling. This is not the end of the season. This is the beginning of the season. Because if you went out like that, you should be up and ready to go, getting ready and prepared to uplift and get 2021-22 season be done. It started right now. As soon as this game ended, shout out to my whole team, my whole network. Shout out to CP, the young Fred Williams. Shout out to CK2K, the young Jim Kelly. Shout out to my homegirl, Ashley, the young Thelma, always bringing good times. Shout out to my board, man, Super Dave. And y'all know who I am. I'm the best closer there is in the game, you know what I'm saying? But you got to appreciate and love everything that's happened for us this season. It started out, you know what I'm saying, Dolan bringing in the dice man, the Don King, Leon Rose, and he put together his team. He brought in World Wide West. He brought in Tom Thibodeau. You know what I'm saying? They put together a whole brand new thing, and he kept Perry around. And Vegas went to talk, and we wouldn't win more than 20 games. And then things just started happening. The team started forming up. RJ started looking better. RJ started making trades. He started making free throws. I got to take you back to the beginning when the young rookie was coming out there on the court, and nobody was knowing who he was. I've been told y'all he was coming. Remember, I was telling y'all, give my man the keys. Give my man the keys. You know what I'm saying? I got to flash back to the beginning of everything and bring it back because I'm right here at the essence. That's why I'm not on the Discord. I'm on the regular phone line, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So everybody just rock with me. A lot of great things has happened this season, you know what I'm saying? Can't forget all the games that we won, you know what I'm saying? Can't forget my man making an all-star. Can't forget my man making, you know what I'm saying, player of the week. Can't forget my man getting player of the month, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Can't believe my man getting the mitt. Can't forget I dropped that anthem call the mitt. Most important player, you know what I'm saying? Most improved player, you know what I'm saying? Going down like that, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to hear Nothing, none of the whining and the crying about what he did do. This is all a learning situation for everybody, you know what I'm saying, that's upon the Knicks, you know what I'm saying. Let me flash back y'all to 2019, you know what I'm saying. Go, of course, down to our, 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 our rival, you know what I'm saying. Let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets for a minute. They had the same team, same type player, same young boys, same dudes that didn't know nothing about being in the playoff, and they went in the playoff, and they went down 4-1 to Philly, you know what I'm saying. Let's not forget that situation. What happened? They showed and proved they know how to be a team. They showed and proved how they should be an organization. They show and prove how, you know what I'm saying, if we get a couple of leaders and come over here, we'll be a, be a strong team and we can go somewhere. So guess what? That's what we did this year, you know what I'm saying? We had a strong foundation and we showed that we know how to play this year and we showed that we up and ready. That's why we got all this cap space. That's why we got all this, you know what I'm saying, all these draft picks. That's why we got a nice foundation. That's why we got the best fans it is. Ain't no other fans, ain't no other team got no fans like us. That's why we travel like we travel, you know what I'm saying? That's why me and CP was down in the A down there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why, you know what I'm saying, the best fans it is, that's why we sold out, you know what I'm saying? We don't do the James Harden, got to go buy no tickets, you know what I'm saying? We love our city, <laughs> and we love our orange and blue, and respect it. That's why we got that standing ovation at the end of the, at the end of the game. That's why Spike turned around and brought himself back in there and sat down like he's supposed to have it. Because I was gonna eat him if he didn't do come back to that game. I was gonna chew him up tonight, you know what I'm saying? So there ain't no other organization that's better than what we got going. You gotta love, you gotta respect, and appreciate everything that we did. I don't see nobody holding their heads down. Tupac, keep your head up, you know what I'm saying? Look, keep your head up to the sky, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no other podcast, ain't no other organization got no all all, all no all celebrities. He's riding all day. Shout out to Chelsea. Shout out to Q-Tip. Shout out to Roy Blake. Ain't nobody got no, you know, people riding like that and, and inside inside their organization like we do. We the best it is, man, and we gonna stay the best. But we got some brewing for years and years and years to come. Just be just be patient, a little bit patient, like I told you at the beginning of the year. You know, what I'm saying? have some more patience. The season is just beginning. You know, what I'm saying it ain't come to an end. So don't even hold your head down. You know, what I'm saying you want to point some fingers. I'm gonna point my fingers at three people. I'm gonna point my finger to Perry. I'm gonna point my finger to World Wide West. I'm gonna. Putting my finger on Leon Rose because Dolan understand how to stay out the way. So it's up to you three to keep adding on the team. Ain't nothing to build. We already built. We adding on. Remember I told y'all about the model. It goes down first. And 
in the cement block and thin the bricks. And that's how you build your house. We got the bricks and we're building up the house right now. You know what I'm saying? So I look for them three to go ahead. Put together this team how it's supposed to be. But if there ain't nobody like Kawhi, and we ain't trying to get no Bradley Bill, and we ain't trying to get nobody like that boy over in Indiana, say that one. Yeah, one more year, um, one year with a two-year team option that'll get us all the way to 2023 when that big boy come out. So, yeah, we got our feet wet. Before you dive in the pool, you touch that water. You make sure it's cool, and then you jump in there. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's 105 <laughs> degrees, you want to touch that water first. So that's what we did this year, man. Salute, salute, salute to the Knicks, man. I appreciate and love everybody that, you know what I'm saying, been rocking with us, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to see y'all next season, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to be right here ready to rock, you know what, what I'm saying? We're going to do something more than this the first round next year. I promise you. I told y'all top eight, but y'all didn't want to believe in that. Believe me, something perfectly good may happen this season and when we um when, when them guys get together in that office. I know my, my, some of y'all might not want to hear it, but I'm telling you, they get ready to do something real big. Ain't no more kill bringing on little chips and everything. They going after somebody really majorly to help this organization to get this point. Julius, appreciate you. Love you, man. Hold your head up. You know what I'm saying? You did it for us. Without you, we wouldn't be talking and doing what we're doing this year, man. Salute, salute, salute. God bless you all. And y'all continue on staying healthy. Continue on safe. Continue on protecting your own. Fathers, love your kids. Mothers, love your kids. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, love your husband. Build your family. Stay together. Remember, that thing is still out there. Don't forget that. That is the code. You know what I'm saying? I see y'all, man. When I see you, I talk to you when I talk to you. I love y'all. Stay healthy and safe. And God bless you all. Let's go. Jay Boogie with the closing sermon to put the bow on the postseason. Throw some fives in the chat. Knicks go down in five. But we get a we get a Jay Boogie five star sermon. The closest thing out, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, Jay Boogie. Oh.